Hello, everyone. So today we are going to speak to you about how we used uh, time series analysis to improve uh, our data center monitoring regarding temperatures. So first, uh, we'll start uh, speaking about the specific use case, and then we'll see how we generalized uh, this approach uh, and included it into our generic machine learning platform called Prescience. And at the end, we are, we are going to give you uh, a, a link of a, disp of a demo video, which we won't have time to display today. Um, so first, let's start with this specific use case. So to monitor our data center temperatures, what we start doing is we start collecting data uh, through IPMI for every single server we have. So among other metrics, uh, we get uh, the temperatures, the CPU temperatures, and then we aggregate these metrics, these temperatures into logical groups, into logical subsystems. So what we, ca what we call a logical group is um, the server room, it can be the server rack, it can be the server itself, it can be anything that can help us in troubleshooting where the cooling issue is. So once we have these aggregates, we build a forecast model for every aggregate we have uh, that we then reuse during the monitoring step to generate alerts. So um, we generate dynamic forecasts, and then we compare the forecast temperature to the real one observed. And if the real one observed uh, goes too far away from the forecast, then we raise some alert. So let's illustrate with a real example. Um, so this is uh, the temperature curve of uh, one of our room in one of our data center. So what we do is we train the model on the blue curve, uh, so on the temperature history here, and, all, and then we evaluate it on the more recent history, the yellow part, to get an idea of what the the, the thresholds uh, should, the alert thresholds should be. And then we use the train model to generate out of sample forecast. So that would be the plot, the points in the future on the right of the plot. So if we train a Sarima model um, on, the, on the blue curve here, and we evaluate it on the yellow part with the correct parameters, here is what we obtain for one, one hour forecast. So actually you can see the forecast uh, fits to the temperature, but it's just one step focused. Uh, we are not using uh, this focused because it's too quickly reactive to any unexpected events we have. The f as you can see on the right of the plot, uh, the focused adapts too quickly to an overheat, and we detect it a bit, uh, a bit uh, too late. So what we do instead is we take several steps focused. Uh, there's a trade-off to find. We, we don't go too far into the future so that we can have a good forecast, but uh, we don't stay too close either from the present so th that we introduce some kind of inertia that, uh, to any unexpected events. So three hours focused in our specific use case was good. So this, this is what we took. Um, actually, um, this is something that we can generalize to any metric you want to monitor. So this is what we did, and this is uh, what Olivier and Guillaume are going to speak about. Hi. Uh, so this uh, project was a, a big success, and it's not always one in advance with a data project. But um, the thing is, uh, it took a few months to, to develop, and uh, we figured that we, we could do better. But before seeing how, let's rewind a little bit and see how um, a data project usually unfolds. So first we start by modelizing the, the problem. Uh, so is it a regression, a classification, a clustering, or a mixture of everything? And then we need to collect data that's relevant to, to the subject. And this is the, actually the, the fun part, the part where the, what you have to think to engineer a, a solution. And then from there, you need to transform the data so that it can be uh, processed by a machine learning algorithm. Uh, this requires a little bit of skill, but it's uh, always more or less the same thing. And then we need to select an algorithm. And let's face it, even if sometimes we have an idea of, of what's going to be better than something else, it's uh, more or less uh, luck. 
And after that, uh, algorithm have a lot of hyperparameters that we need to optimize. And uh, this is a, a very a dull process. It's very long, uh, boring, and we end up uh, going back, selecting another algorithm, and trying a bunch of a uh, bunch of things. And once we have done that, so once we have a trained model, we need to industrialize. So typically, we build an API that's going to be used by other applications. It's going to transform the, the data so that uh, we can uh, query the model. The model will make a prediction. And the data is going to be transformed uh, back so that the user can understand the prediction. But that's not it. So this is a minimal instance. But uh, we may want to refresh the data, so uh, retrain the model so that it uh, takes into account new data. So usually, we add a retrain mechanism. And in general, we also want to uh, monitor the performance of the model to see if it doesn't uh, shift. And like in every application, we may also want to monitor the, the service to see if, the, if it's up or down, the quality of service, etc. And then what? When we have a lot of uh, projects, even uh, four or five, uh, they are all a little bit different because they were developed by different people, but they have the same structure. But since they are a lot, uh, they are all a little bit different. We end up taking a lot of time in maintaining all of them differently, and that's a bit of a shame. So, what we did is that we we created a platform, OVH uh, Prescience. Uh, in which you, you still have to do the interesting part as a data scientist, modelize a problem and collecting data. And once you've done that, the, the platform will transform the data accordingly and using Bayesian optimization, select the best uh, algorithm, or at least a good one. And once you've done that, that part you can supervise. Once you've done that, you, uh, the platform will generate an API that's monitored and with a lot of other features which makes your life easier. So now Guillaume will uh, tell you how we made it scale using OpenStack. Thank you, Olivier. Hello. So our first decision is this is the overall uh, prescience architecture. And the first decision was to use OpenStack as well to deploy VMs because we wanted to deploy different VMs, some with GPU, some with more RAM. And to um, easily deploy it, we added our, our uh, 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 OVH product called Q Kubernetes upon OpenStack. And uh, we also use uh, some uh, pr other products like lo load balancer or database. And for the, st the storage, we uh, used uh, Swift, which is pretty cool. And uh, we don't have to uh, worry about uh, scaling or the size. We only can be uh, focused on the value on the platform as well. And each product has uh, its own container. Uh, here is the uh, prescience architecture in detail, but time is running out uh, right now, and uh, if you have questions, we can uh, discuss after the presentation. It's not a problem. And here is an example of prescience in uh, production. And uh, like Raphael said, we have a uh, temperature here, and uh, it, it's forecast in uh, red, and the score of this model, and this model has been automatically built uh, by uh, prescience. So if you want to know more about this, we already have done a video, which is uh, available here at this address or uh, with this QR code. And uh, you can also contact us uh, through our guitar. Uh, and uh, here is the labs for free. You can test uh, our platform and uh, discuss uh, with, uh, with us uh, about this. Thank you.